Spider-Man fans, welcome back to my channel. This is Ozzy Movie Reviews. My name is Onda Brinker, and welcome back to Spider-Man Movie Reviews. Last time I reviewed the same Raimi movies. Now we got No Way Home coming out, and I just watched it, and I want to review that movie so bad. But of course, we got to talk about the Mark Webb Spider-Man movies or the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. There's only two of them, like it's not a whole trilogy, so we can get these two out of the way. We're going from a movie that started all, which is The Amazing Spider-Man. This movie came out in 2012. It's directed by Mark Webb and stars Andrew Garfield, Emma Stone, Rice Ivan, Dennis Leary, Martin Sheen, and Sally Field. Now, there are some interesting things about The Amazing Spider-Man. This movie was not meant to come out. Actually, Spider-Man 4 was meant to come out that year. But, of course, production issues, the film has got cancelled, so Sony decided let's reboot this franchise because that's what Hollywood does these days. So this is a complete reboot with a brand new cast, brand new universe, and different story. And The Amazing Spider-Man was definitely an interesting movie to say the least because when I was 12, I did like this movie. Actually a lot. Like as a kid, I did like this better than the Raimi films. But I was a kid. I was 12 years old. I liked every single movie that came out. I don't know the differences between good and bad movies back then. So, The Amazing Spider-Man, I liked it as a kid. But do I like it now? Now, I know a lot of people like this movie. And I respect your opinion. I really do. But I'm going to be very, very biased here. I am not a huge fan of The Amazing Spider-Man. I don't think it's a terrible movie. I don't think it's a bad movie at all. It's just an okay movie. There are some good things about The Amazing Spider-Man. So, I decided... Instead of talking about the negatives first, let's talk about the positives this time. I would say Andrew Garfield does a great job playing Spider-Man. And you can really tell that he is very passionate playing this role because he said that this role he really wants to do because he's a big Spider-Man fan. And you can really tell when he is Spider-Man, he is having fun playing this role. And I like that Spider-Man is basically doing quips in this film. That is a big change from the Raimi films because the Raimi films, they took him a bit seriously, even though there are some humors along with that film. This movie, it's going for what the comics are marketing, that he does quips to bad guys and stuff. And I thought that's a little cool tree in the film. I think Andrew Garfield does a good performance as Spider-Man. Peter Parker, we'll get back to that later. I think the action was fine. I think the filmmaking, per se, actually looks very, very good in this film. I think the way that Spider-Man swings in the film, it is filmed very, very well. It looks beautiful at some stage. Like one scene where the cranes are helping Spider-Man swinging to Dr. Connors. I thought that scene was actually really well done. It's very well shot. When you see Spider-Man swing, it does look good to watch. Like, I'll give it that. Like, when you watch on Blu-ray, it's something entertaining to watch. I think Emma Stone was also really good as Gwen Stacy. I actually kind of like her a little better than Kristen Dunst as MJ because she's kind of like this one dimensional character where she basically, you know, gets in trouble all the time. Even though I like Mary Jane's character, she just does the same thing in every movie. This movie, at least Gwen Stacy does stuff, and she is actually very, very smart, like Peter was in this film. So they combine a really good chemistry in the film, and I really do like the chemistry between Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy in the film. I thought they are very cute together, and in fact, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone actually did date it while this movie was made, so you can really feel the chemistry in this film. Also, I think Dennis Leary is very unappreciated in this film. I thought he was really good as Captain Stacy, who is Gwen Stacy's father. He's the chief of the police. He wants to hunt down Spider-Man, so he's basically the J. Jonah Jameson in this universe. I think Dennis Leary does a really good job in the film. And the movie looks nice, even though... I really am not a fan of this, like, grayish, like, filter with it. Like, the trailer's marketed as, like, oh, it looks very blue. But in the movie, for some reason, it just looks very gray, like, you know, like, gray is filtered. Like, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to explain it. But when you see the comparison right here, you know what I mean. Mark Webb is the director of most indie films, especially 500 Days of Summer, which is one of my favorite rom-coms of all time. So this is big for him. And I think he directed the movie very, very well. But, that's where I'm going to go to my negatives, because The Amazing Spider-Man was mostly disappointing. I honestly find this film just pretty mediocre, it's pretty okay. I think the biggest issue that I have with The Amazing Spider-Man is that this movie really misleads itself. The trailers in this movie marketed this movie as the untold story, something we haven't seen before in the Spider-Man movies. It goes for the plot where Peter Parker needs to find his parents, that's what the trailers really marketed this movie as. 
But no, this movie is basically a remake of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. There's still the same shit that happens. A spy bit Peter Parker, he gets his powers, Uncle Ben's death, it's in there. Peter learning responsibility, becoming his hero, and finding the villain. That is basically this movie. And the parents aspect was literally in the first half of the film and just a bit towards the middle. It doesn't have any explanation because the movie kind of doesn't know what it wants to be. Is it trying to be an untold story or it's trying to be a remake? And I really wasn't a fan of Ray Ivans as the lizard slash Dr. Kirk Connors. I think he was fine in performance standpoint, but him as a character, I just find him very, very dull in the movie. And honestly, the lizard in the film, the look of the lizard, looks terrible. I really am not a fan of this design. It looks nothing like the comics. It just looks very, very lazily dull in my opinion. And I thought the lizard's plan in The Amazing Spider-Man is just complete dumb, that he wants to turn cops into lizards, whereas this other plot where Dr. Kirk Connors wants to fix his hand, and that's how he turns into the lizard, they didn't explain it anymore because it just changes the film completely and wanted to turn cops into lizards to make an army. Probably the dumbest, like, Spider-Man plot in any Spider-Man movie ever. And speaking of terrible designs, I really didn't like the suit in this movie. It just looks completely terrible. Like, a lot of people say it looks like a basketball suit. I completely agree. Out of any Spider-Man suits, this is definitely the worst Spider-Man suit that's ever designed in the Spider-Man franchise. And I know a lot of people are saying, Peter Parker is just this poor high schooler. That he doesn't have any money. He can make a poor looking suit. Well, how come he can make web shooters out of things that he can buy with a lot of money? Because there are web shooters in this movie. So if he can, like, afford so many stuff for the web shooters, I'm sure he can make a much better suit than that. And Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker in this movie... Yeah, I really wasn't a fan of him and Peter Parker in this movie. The Amazing Spider-Man 2, that's a different story. But in this movie, I really don't buy him as Peter Parker. I think he's just this punk skateboarder kid that... I don't understand why he's bullied, because he's like this ladies man good looking guy basically. He doesn't look like a guy that gets picked on. And Andrew Garfield was actually 30 when this movie was made. I'm not joking, he was 30. There are parts of the movie where I'm like, did he forget his lines or he just doesn't want to be this character at all? Okay, 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 I gotta tell you this one thing, I gotta tell you this one thing, and it's, it's about the, the vigilante and the car thief, alright? Oh. Okay, no, forget that. I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm, I'm gonna talk about me, okay? Which is really confusing. He is great as Spider-Man, but then as Peter Parker, he really doesn't sound that convincing. And you don't root for Peter Parker at all in this film because he really just felt very dull. And I wasn't enjoying Andrew Garfield's performance as Peter Parker. As Spider-Man, I loved because he felt like Spider-Man. But as Peter Parker, that's the important part because it's the alter ego. He's supposed to follow this hero on the journey, and that's what the thing that Sam Raimi does really well. It combines the character of Spider-Man and Peter Parker all in one. This movie, I'm more of a fan of Spider-Man than Peter Parker, and that is not good in this film. I think The Amazing Spider-Man, in my opinion, is just a big mess, in my opinion. Like, I thought this movie was very misleading, because there is something that's interesting in the market where I'm like, okay, they're going for something different, but no, this movie is just the exact same story as the other Spider-Man movies. It goes through the same, like, tropes, like Uncle Ben's death, learn about responsibility and stuff, and the villain is really, really dumb in this film. There's actually one good moment in this film which I was really, like, invested in the movie, where Spider-Man basically saves this boy in the film. And I just love that scene. It was so entertaining. It's like it completely changes itself. And when you see the dad hugging the kid after Spider-Man retrieves him, you see the emotions that Spider-Man goes through where he sees a father hugging a kid. He reminds him of Uncle Ben. I'm like, this could have been great. Like, this could have been in the Raimi films. That's a perfect scene for a Raimi film. But it's just shipped on The Amazing Spider-Man. Guys, overall, The Amazing Spider-Man was just dull. It's honestly okay, in my opinion. It has entertaining moments. The action was fine. But I feel like my biggest issue with The Amazing Spider-Man is that this film really, really misled itself. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Is it trying to be the origin story? Is it trying to be an untold story? Is it trying to be a remake? It combines all those things together and it really messes the film up. I think Andrew Garfield was great as Spider-Man. I think the cast were good for what they're given. Like, you know, like Emma Stone. Even I did mention Martin Sheen and Sally Field as Uncle Ben and Aunt May. I thought they did a good job for what they're given. But overall, guys, the Amazing Spider-Man was just the most okay-ish movie in the Spider-Man franchise. I'm not a huge fan 
of this movie, and I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man a C minus. All right, guys, stay tuned for my very last Spider-Man review, which is <sighs> that movie, the Sinister Six Sony movie. Look forward to that coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. And what do you guys think of The Amazing Spider-Man? Do you think it's better than the same Raimi movies? Let me know in the comments below if you like the movie, hate the movie, or you thought it's okay. Make sure you guys follow me on social media links down below. Facebook, Stardust, Instagram, Twitter, or Letterboxd. Keep contact with me. And make sure you guys subscribe to my channel notified for my latest movie reviews and other movie related content. And have a nice day.